Uh, my name's Tim. I'm husband to a wife of seven years, yeah, married seven years, uh, three kids, high school teacher, uh, been here at Salt Church for about a year, um, been on the team for maybe five months, something like that. I'm a full-time high school teacher and uh, volunteer staff pastor, so like I'm, I'm on staff here, I'm not paid, but uh, yeah, I try to be in every conversation that I can be in on, uh, that my job, my full-time paid job allows me to be. What is magnification all about? So at, at Salt Church, uh, we, we really want to see magnification be about Salt Church members thinking, acting, feeling, growing in their love or, and desire for God. So we just want them to have a bigger picture of God, to love God more every day and to be growing in that. It's, it's a lot focused on, for us, the Sunday gatherings. We've got two gatherings, four and six o'clock. It looks a lot about kind of tracking how, how the Sunday's looking, how future Sundays are looking, different things that are going to be happening, um, looking over the teams that are going to be uh, on that Sunday. A uh, lot of stuff like <laughs> looking just at spreadsheets of who's doing what and other teams all sorted and that sort of stuff. But also very much focused on, on the Sunday, being the point person of making sure that the things happen that you want to happen so that we, we have a great gathering, that, that people are, you know, they are singing, praying, uh, loving God in that Sunday together. So you speak about having your eyes in a spreadsheet, but also being out mm. front as, as well? A little bit, yeah. Uh, like I, I wouldn't, I certainly probably wouldn't be that much up, more up front than maybe a lot of my team guys or anything. I'm not, uh, we're not no, overly focused on that, but certainly looking at what the person up front is doing, how they're doing it, how they're praying, uh, how music is being led and how the congregation's singing and praying, those sorts of things. I think uh, magnification is a big push for well, let's make sure we do things right. Let's make sure we are doing them uh, because we, we love God, we trust God. We know that even if he's told us to do something that maybe pragmatically doesn't look like the best thing to be doing uh, or the, most, the thing that makes the most sense, we still wanna be doing it regardless. And I think that is, that's what I, as a magnification pastor, that's what I wanna be thinking about the most. Are we doing? and uh, the things that God has told us to do. Are we praying in a way that glorifies him? Are we singing in a way that glorifies him? Are we even, you know, putting up artwork in a way that glorifies him? That's, that's the sort of stuff that I think uh, magnification pastors should be thinking about. So I imagine there's a lot of conflict in uh, what you do. You know, if, I, if you look at churches, everyone has an opinion about music. Mm. Everyone has an opinion about prayer and yeah. how long, how short. Uh, people have opinions about how, how long a sermon should be as well. Sure. How do you deal with that conflict? Uh, look, I think uh, one, of the, one of the more freeing things about not being in a, um, I guess, a strong historical tradition is there is the ability to really come back to scripture and go, well, what, it, what does it say we have to do and what does it, there seem to be some sort of room on to, to move about? And that's the conversation I think you have to have with every person that brings it up. Well, let's go and have a look at it. Let's, let's see, where is it? No, sorry, we're not, we're not budging. We're going to do prayer up, up front at church. We're going to do corporate reading of the Bible. We're not budging on those things, but how we do them and, and what part of the gathering they fit into, well, you know, maybe that's not prescriptive and maybe we can talk about how that works and doing things differently. It doesn't have to be three songs at the start and one at the end, okay? You know, we can have that conversation, but I think it's really important, particularly with creatives who sometimes, you know, there seems to be that uh, push to, some, to want to do things uh, as creative as possible that no, there are prescriptive elements and we can't budge from that. How do you measure success in magnification? Yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's really hard. It's something uh, I wrestle with a bit. Here's a couple of things we're trying to do in that. Uh, we, first of all, we look after, um, we've started a thing of daily devotions. Uh, one way I can measure that is I can see how many people are opening them, how many people are hopefully engaging with them. I can do a bit of feedback on that uh, and see. The biggest mechanism I want to, I want to try and use is uh, I am looking to do, a, a, I guess, a 
qualitative survey at the start of a year to sort of ask Salt Church, hopefully really honestly and in a way that, that gives them even an opportunity to reflect on themselves, how, how they feel about uh, things like singing, um, pr you know, are they praying? Are they thinking about how they're praying? Are they engaging with, um, with scripture? Are they meeting with one another to, to talk about God? Are they killing sin? Are they hating sin? Uh, these are things that I want to know. And for me, that seems to be the best data that I could probably get on actually the purpose, which is people growing in their love and thinking, acting and feeling. So yeah, that, it's a really tricky one with magnification, I think. A lot of your role is modelling. Um, mm. how, how do you keep yourself magnifying, uh, you know, giving praise? Like how, mm. Personally, how do you grow as a magnification pastor? Uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, I guess I hope that this is where, I guess, the theology of the five M's all comes together for me. I hope I would be growing in the other M's. Uh, I think it's been particularly helpful for me. Uh, the, the M's was a very new system to me, uh, even though I, I guess you see elements of it elsewhere. But I want to myself be growing in the knowledge of God. I want to be growing in my love. So I'm, I'm engaging with the other M's, I guess, and being influenced by the other M pastors. And for me, that seems to be the best way that I actually grow in my love for God. Now, I guess there are the other aspects, the pure magnification aspects that um, I certainly would want to remark on as well, which is uh, I really hope that I'm praying for Salt Church as much as I possibly can. Uh, I hope that I would be the loudest singer on the Sunday, regardless of the quality of my voice, because I love to sing to God. And I, I hope that I would be reflecting on God's word, you know, every day uh, and, and thinking about not just, you know, not just letting it sit there, but thinking about what does that mean for my life and, and in what way do I need to be more like Jesus and kill sin and, and love people more and yeah. So I, I hope that I would be modeling those things as well.